Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, welcome to the second half of employability, creativity, and personal development. Great to see you all here. I'm also glad that you have finished your portfolios, you have submitted them, uh, and it was really a lot of hard work. I really appreciate your enormous hard work in this module. I, um, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, going over all your portfolios in the next uh, 10 days, two weeks. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing your portfolio. Thanks a lot for your hard work and efforts. Uh, today we are kickstarting the second half of this module. So welcome to the second half. Uh, for this half as well, you will prepare a similar portfolio. Uh, which will be due on December 15th. So we will kickstart that new portfolio today um, while I'll be going over your um, submitted portfolios. You can start on working on your new portfolios. And on Monday, we will be starting our new uh, seminar series where we will go over uh, again, eight seminars, the same structure will follow and we will do them one by one in our seminar sessions. And you will be submitting everything again on uh, December 15th. Okay, so welcome again. Uh, and let us kickstart our first and second lectures. This is the second half. And let me share the slides with you. These are on your blackboard. Welcome to the second half, lectures one and two. And great to see you all. Before we start, I just want to remind you about your second portfolio. Here is the assessment. It is very similar to your first portfolio, actually. It is just the continuation. Uh, so it is due on December 15th you have two options to choose from. Instead of the job application, this time you will be creating an asset creation project. So you will think about what you want to do after graduation. You have two options to choose from. The first one is called 7i project. This one is about creating your creative assets for your future. So whatever you are curious, passionate about, you will think of it as a Kickstarter type of project. So the goal here is to apply creativity, originality and depth and use your best creative skills and talents. So what can you do for your 7i project? If you choose this option, you can establish your own YouTube channel uh, or your podcast or your blog. But what matters is you need to uh, really establish it. For example, if you establish your YouTube channel, you need to have at least one video uploaded on it and show that you have done it. The same with the other things. If you want to create something, make sure that you start creating it. You show evidence for your creation. Okay, so give links, proper internet links, uh, upload your videos or podcasts or blogs, whatever you want to do. So I want you to come up with something that you're passionate about. You can compose songs uh, or create ideas for your first album if you are passionate about music. You can create your own fashion line or your own brand, your own catalog, and you can put some clothing, sample clothing design in it. Or you can uh, create your own book proposal if you want to write a book. Perhaps you can write the intro for that book and some uh, marketing for that book. So uh, if you choose this 7i option, you will show some evidence that you have done, uh, started doing this. It can be like a Kickstarter type of project, a cr something creative, something fresh, something exciting that you want to bring to the world. What can you do? First, you summarize it as an elevator pitch, and then you capture your artwork, uh, present evidence about it. Uh, make sure that you attach uh, these or the internet links. Uh, and then describe the process of creation. Why did you come up with this? How did you create this? Why do you think this is original? And how does it connect to this module? Uh, and you explain uh, how you developed skills and learned. Uh, 
where is your contribution? What is the significance of this? How does it connect to your voice, your career goals and passions? And who are your fans? Uh, how will you reach that target group? And you will have a poster at the end. So uh, the real bit, half, half of your portfolio will be this 7i project, 50%, uh, okay? Uh, there's a second option. If you want to choose the second option, this is entrepreneurial business proposal. So if you want to imagine yourself as an entrepreneur and if you want to establish your own business after graduation you can uh, do choose this option as well so if you choose this option you will prepare a focused creative entrepreneurial business proposal for your enterprise so let's say you want to create some new products now some new services a new uh, business so you will try to solve a problem, uh, create an innovative solution and commercialize it. So for example, you can create a cafe or a restaurant, a training company, a technology company, a social media company, etc. Whatever you are passionate about and you want to do after your graduation, uh, my proposition is don't wait for your graduation, start kickstart your company right now. So if you choose this option, it will be like a shark tank pitch you know, just read them. Uh, and again, it will be very similar to the 7i. Uh, the components are, again, very similar. Executive summary, describe your business. What is your secret sauce? Uh, how do you attain sustainable competitive advantage? What are your products and services? How is the market? How will you differentiate yourself in this market? How will, who are your customers and how will you reach them? and some basic financials and operations, some basic metrics, like how will you make sure that you will be successful? How will you measure your success? And how will you be financially successful? Let's say make some profit. And then the poster, okay? So, but the, uh, I don't want you to go into too much detail in terms of the technical aspects of your business plan. Uh, this one is, again, uh, the big picture. Uh, we are more interested in big vision and your own entrepreneurial voice and creative ideas, really. So if you want to go wild, think beyond the box, by all means, do it. Uh, try to establish your website. Try to uh, develop some prototype for your product or service. Try to show it. Okay. Uh, so you will choose among these two options. If you choose 7i option, Again, as I said, this will be like a Kickstarter type of project. You will bring something fresh, creative, exciting to the world. It is like a more artistic type of project, more creative. And the second bit, if you this one, uh, this one is more business oriented and more entrepreneurial. So think about which option you will choose, okay, for your uh, project, semester project, uh, the second half project. Uh, the rest of your portfolio will be le your lecture evidence. This is exactly the same. You will just be choose from the second half lectures instead of the first half. But the assignment itself, it's exactly the same. Again, uh, six paragraphs for the six lectures, for the six lecture series, yeah. And you will choose two learning adventures from the second half. Uh, the same thing, exactly what you did, just different lectures, okay? So this will be 10%. And the last bit will be seminar activities, which will be, again, the same, 40%. Just the seminars are different this time. And we will start kickstart the seminars this Monday, upcoming Monday and Tuesday. Okay, so we will again follow this a very similar structure. You will be actually doing these activities during our seminars. Okay, and we will start them on Monday. So uh, this will be your second assessment, and it will be due on December 15th. And as you see, this is how you will be graded. 
executive summary will be 10%, whichever option you choose. You can choose 7i or the entrepreneurial business proposal. So is it compelling, original? Where is the wow factor? Where is the secret sauce? And then creativity and design thinking, innovative potential is 10%. And then your voice, your own personal voice. How does it connect to you? Why are you passionate about it? That is 10%. And then the impact and contribution. How do you change things? How do you create positive change? That will be 10%. And your preparation, evidence, research, knowledge, uh, that will be 10%. The evidence that you have done enough research. And 10% will be your lecture evidence, the same as uh, the portfolio one. And the appendix, seminar appendix is again, 40%, uh, the same again. It's very similar to what we, will, we are doing already. Okay, so this will be, um, I'm hoping that like you, you are already familiar, you have already done the first half. So hopefully this will be like a piece of cake for you. You have already done a very similar version, but imagine this one even has like even bigger potential for you. Why? Because you are creating your own creative assets here. The first half of the project, it is all about creating your own future, designing your own future through your own assets. Think about your own assets. For example, if you want, to write let's say you will start writing on medium for example do it that will be your project if you want to establish a youtube channel do it that will be your project and will reflect on the process if you want to establish a business do it you know if you want to uh, establish your own podcast do it if you want to write your own book start doing it you know like that's the idea you like um this is the only module that will give you the opportunity to create your own creative assets. You will get credits for this. And this module is the only one in your journey that will give you the opportunity to design your future, but also uh, create something new, exciting, fresh for yourself. So this is the... Um, assessment any questions up to now regarding uh, your assessment and the second portfolio if you have any questions please feel free to type them up okay now i want you to think a little bit about your uh, second portfolio. Let's start thinking about it. I want you to um, do some brainstorming now. Remember your 50%, which is the really critical bit, you know, uh, for designing your own future. That is, uh, you have two options, okay? Option A, 7i project. This one is more creative option, uh, let's say, it's a bit more artistic. You want to create something new. This can be like you want to write a book, you want to create music, a fashion line, or a blog, or a YouTube channel, something new. Okay. That is option A. And option B is you want to create your own business. Uh, so you want to create a new product or service. Think of it like a, a Shark Tank type of project. Uh, where you will pitch your ideas for a uh, really game-changing business, entrepreneurial business that you want to do. Let's say you are already interested in becoming an entrepreneur. This is your chance to establish and push forward your entrepreneurial dreams. Okay. So which option will you be choosing? I want you to think about it now. Option A, that one is more Kickstarter-like project. You want to create something innovative, fresh, new, creative. Or option B, you want to create a business, an entrepreneurial project. So which option will you be choosing? 
for your semester uh, second half project. So the rest will be seminar work. 40% will be the seminar work. We will kickstart them on Monday and 10% will be your lecture evidence. Very similar to the last part. So I want you to um, get a fresh page, a new white page now, open a new white page on your notebook and think about what you want to do for your project. Would you, which one is more appealing to you? Would you like to do the 7i or the entrepreneurial option? Please uh, capture your thoughts, whatever comes into your mind, take some notes on a white page in your notebook. Which one is more appealing to you? Capture your reflections. So here is your chance. In the next couple of minutes, I want you to start creating some ideas. Which option did you choose? Uh, which option will you be choosing? Can you come up with some ideas? Options. Like you can go wild. You can go crazy. You can do anything that you like in this module. And this is your opportunity. This is your chance. Okay? So I want you to start thinking about these, your options. And uh, until next Friday, please bring some ideas to work with so that next Friday we will be discussing them. You will be discussing them with your peers. Okay, and we will be working on these ideas. You will be working on them in the upcoming lectures. So which option will you be choosing? 7i or the entrepreneurial business option? And what do you want to do? What could be some of exciting options for you? I want you to Make a list of all the things that excite you. You know, do something that you will be really looking forward to. You will be loving to do it. You will love to do. Yeah. You know, what would you like to do? Think of yourself as the artist. Think of yourself as the entrepreneur. And in today's world, you know, these worlds are blurred. You are an artist. And you are an entrepreneur at the same time. You know, you have to be all, basically. So if you want to do something uh, between options A and B, that's also fine. It's up to you. Okay, so let's say you want to blend them together or you want to create your own option, you know, uh, that's also fine. You can craft this as you wish. You are the author. You are the curator. You are the entrepreneur. You are the artist, okay? And this is the only module in your journey that gives you open uh, white pages, you know, whatever you want to do, this is your chance to do it. And you will get credit for this, which is, I think, the ultimate luxury, you know. This is your chance to do something that you are excited about. So think about it. And please make some notes in the next two minutes. And remember, the more ideas you have, the better. Don't settle on the first idea that comes to you. Try to push yourself a bit harder. Can you think of something more colorful, more exciting, perhaps, more refreshing? If you want to take risk, by all means, take all the risk that you need. You will be rewarded for taking risks in this module. You know, I want you to take risks. Go wild with options. Whatever you want to do, it's all acceptable, you know. You can do anything. You know, if you want to 
do, let's say, something about, let's say, climate change and global warming, you can do something like that. Like it can also be like a social responsibility project. It doesn't have to be uh, option A or B. You can create your own option, which will be option C. Okay, it's up to you. Just follow a similar structure and adapt it. So what could be the things that excite you, that you want to do? Try to create five different ideas, if you can, in the next one minute. Which option is more appealing to you? 7i or entrepreneurial business proposal? And whatever you want to do, do it, okay? Let's say you're passionate about sports. Then start blogging about sports, let's say. You are passionate about tennis. Start something, do something about tennis. You know, you can just uh, turn this into creative ideas or entrepreneurial ideas, as you wish. Nowadays, you are, think of yourself as a one-person company. You know, one person, you are the CEO of your life. So try to design your life, in which will be really meaningful and exciting and colorful for you. So think of yourself like a superhero. What do you wish to create? What will be your superpowers? How do you wish to change the world? Even in a small way. And why do you want to do this? Think about why, why, why. You know, try to uh, find something which will be really meaningful that you really want to achieve. You really want to do this. You know, uh, let me give some examples from my previous students. My students love this project, by the way. It, it is one of the most appealing parts of this module because this project is the only part in your journey where you are given the opportunity and the space to do things that you do care about, you know, to follow your dreams, your excitement. So my students have achieved amazing things uh, in the past few years. Some created their own fashion lines, fashion brands. Some created their own websites. Some created their own podcasts. Some created their own YouTube channels and uploaded many videos and they are uh, now becoming, uh, some of my students, they kick-started their Medium pages. They have started writing on Medium and one of them is actually uh, making about like $500 a month from Medium, just writing on Medium. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Like uh, they do it, you know, students 
do it. You, know, you can do it and you can start it right now. You don't need to wait for graduation. You are an entrepreneur right now. You are an author right now. You are a um, creative artist right now. You know, don't wait for anything. Don't wait for your degree. Start it right now. And that's the whole idea. You know, make some mistakes, take some risks. What is there to lose? You don't lose anything. You will get credit for this and you will love doing it. So don't wait and do something that will energize you and excite you. That's the idea, okay? So please think about this over the next couple of days, over the, this weekend, and until next Friday. So come up with a lot of ideas and uh, try to write them, keep a journal, keep a diary. And next Friday, you will be discussing your ideas with one another and you will be coaching one another, okay? So uh, please come prepared until next Friday and think about what you want to do for your asset creation project. Okay, so this one is your asset creation project. Either the seven I or the entrepreneurial business proposal. Both of them are about creating your own assets. And this is your chance. You know, if you want to get rich, if you want to be super successful in the long term, you need to create your own creative assets. And this project will help you to do okay. Is everything clear? Any questions up to now? So we asked, is it okay to send it by Word document? Uh, th this portfolio, if you mean the portfolio submission, uh, it will be as the same way. You will submit this through Blackboard. Okay, but uh, you will submit this everything together again on December 15th. And it will be, Word document is okay, PDF is also okay. Okay, uh, and to Snarky, yes, exactly. It's the same thing for lectures. So you will be writing um, two, uh, you will be writing one paragraph actually, uh, but two, two things. What did you learn? How can you apply it? right uh, about each two hour sessions so way if it messed up your tables then uh, you may want to fix it in a pdf okay so like sometimes word messes up things i can understand that and if you have had trouble with it i i know I, i'm i'm sorry that you encountered these problems um, so what i recommend is fix everything and then turn it into PDF. When, when you are ready for submission, let's say everything is ready on Word. You fixed everything. Don't touch it afterwards, okay? Let's say it is December 15th. Oh, it's almost the deadline. You have fixed everything and then turn it into PDF and you can submit it as PDF if you want because PDF, uh, it doesn't mess, mess up, okay? If you do PDF, PDF fixes everything. Okay, so consider that. Okay. So please think about your projects. Let me just start today's lecture then. We are experiencing uh, historical times indeed so baby shark video surpassed despacito video of course this is not the um historical bit it's a joke but this is important i think yeah uh, the biden era begins so uh, as you see these are from twitter uh, so this is a new era for the world and as you can see people have had quite fun time uh, about the elections And I have included uh, some magazine covers uh, as well as some articles. Zeynep Tufekci wrote on America's next authoritarian will be much more competent. Trump was ineffective, easily beaten. Uh, a future strongman won't, strong won't be. So, which is a chilling article. 
but you can also remember uh, if if you want to remember what happened the Donald Trump years you can watch uh, these key moments of his pres presidency uh, and James Corden created an amazing summary uh, about four years of Donald Trump in just three minutes so you can watch this as well okay so let's uh, open a white page now this is a new era and this is a new era for this module as well uh, the second half we are kick-starting the second half today I wanted to do something unusual uh, I just brought together whatever excites me so uh, in what follows is I just wish to share with you uh, things that I have come across about imagination so this is an imagination workshop it's an interdisciplinary futurist workshop our main topic will be technology, of course, but we will explore it through science fiction, jobs, cities, innovations, and entertainment. So let us start. We will uh, start with the feature of technology. Google achieved a huge milestone and a paradigm shift in computing last year. What was that milestone? Any guesses? So I think some of you might have guessed it right. This is, of course, quantum supremacy. What is quantum supremacy? Why is it so critical? What is the big deal about it? You know, the quantum computers, they are special computers uh, because they operate on the basis of not zeros and ones, but qubits, which is a mixture of zero and one at the same time. Remember Schrodinger's cat and quantum physics. Quantum computers in the natural world to produce machines with staggeringly powerful processing potential. I think it's going to be the most important computing technology of this century, which we are really just about one-fifth into. We could use quantum computers to simulate molecules to build new drugs and new materials, and to solve problems plaguing physicists for decades. Wall Street could use them to optimize portfolios, simulate economic forecasts, and for complex risk analysis. Quantum computing could also help scientists speed up discoveries in adjacent fields like machine learning and artificial intelligence. Amazon, Google, IBM, and Microsoft, plus a host of smaller companies such as Rigetti and D-Wave, are all betting big on quantum. You were a billionaire. How many of your billions did you give over for an act of 10 years of life? There are some simply astonishing financial opportunities in quantum computing. This is why there's so much interest, even though it's so far down the road. But nothing is ever a sure thing, and dealing with the quirky nature of quantum physics, create some big hurdles for this nascent technology. From the very beginning, it was you know, understood that building a useful quantum computer was going to be a staggeringly hard engineering problem, if it was even possible at all. Right? And there were even distinguished physicists in the 90s who said this will never work. Is quantum truly the next big thing in computing? Or is it destined to become something more like nuclear fusion? destined to always be the technology of the future, never the present. In October 2019, Google made a big announcement. Google said it had achieved quantum supremacy. That's the moment when quantum computers can beat out the world's most powerful supercomputers for certain tasks. They've demonstrated with the quantum computer that it can perform a computation in seconds what would take the world's fastest supercomputer years, thousands of years, to do that same calculation. And in the field, this is known as quantum supremacy, and it's a really important milestone. Google used a 53-qubit processor named Sycamore to complete the computation, a completely arbitrary mathematical problem with no real-world application. The Google quantum computer spit out an answer in about 200 seconds. It would have taken the world's fastest computer around 10,000 years to come up with a solution, according to Google scientists. Okay, so this is an exciting era indeed. If you are into quantum supremacy, you can also watch the next video. But let's continue with the next puzzle. Which voice assistant can make the most intelligent voice calls? Among all of them, which one is the most clever one you can trust with your telephone calls? I think you know the answer to this. 
Google Assistant, of course, it's the most intelligent among them for now, better than Alexa and Siri. Uh, and Google CEO have shown it in a great demo. The promise you may want to get an oil change even in the US. So let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. What happens is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm -hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 115. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks, great. Have a great day. Bye. Okay, this is the second call that they demonstrate, which goes wrong a bit, but you will see, it's so interesting. Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For seven people? Um, it's for four people. Four people with day, um, night? Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually, we need to for like after like a five people. For people, for people, you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? For when tomorrow or weekday or for next Wednesday, um, seven. Oh no, it's not too busy. It's just, you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I gotcha. Thanks. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, as you can see, Google's AI is getting smarter even than people. Uh, it's a matter of time, I think. Okay, in 2020, which country had the most number of companies on Fortune's Global 500 list? Any guesses? You can actually... Uh, like write your guesses if you have any guesses uh, you can type them in the chat box which country has the most number of companies is it united states no it is china so china has 124 companies on this list whereas us has 121 companies and China has that means China has recently surpassed in terms of economic dominance uh, and it is the leader in technology and economics uh, the new leader of the world uh, and it signals it through this list as well so what we witness is uh, an intense competition for power and domination the eagle and the dragon how will they compete in the next decade? At the forefront of this competition is technology. So this is a dominantly technology race. And Beijing laid out plans to become world leader in artificial intelligence by 2030. And it is making huge investments on that. And China has the world's most valuable unicorn. What is it? It is, of course, ByteDance. Uh, and TikTok. TikTok is a ByteDance, uh, ByteDance brand. And of course, China uh, has the highest number of STEM graduates, uh, nearly 5 million. And it has the most scientific academic papers as well. And 
uh, it is computing on patent filings. So let's look at uh, 5G. If we look at 5G, uh, you see that you know this is one of the forefronts of this technology competition. It is a big deal. 5G is a big deal. Why? You can see the reason on this map. Uh, it improves everything one, one, 10 times or 100 times. So it is a big deal. But right now, as China has become the leader in 5G, now we are even talking about 6G now. 6G will be even faster and it will be 100 times faster than 5G. And nowadays they are talking about 6G. Everyone is talking about 6G. And China last week sent its first 6G test setup into the orbit. So China is again the world leader in this technology, 6G. From artificial intelligence to facial recognition, China is setting the new rules in new technology throughout the world. China is very advanced in mobile payments. Alipay and WeChat Pay are already big. Cash is dead in China, so are credit cards. So many of the financial technologies, they are emerging uh, in uh, the Dragon Valley, Silicon Dragon. So China also has the world's largest number of unicorns. Uh, and China produced 200, uh, more than 200 unicorns, more than the US. So China creates the unicorn every 3.8 days, basically. And six of the world's largest unicorns, 10 unicorns, they are headquartered in China. Let's look at them. Ant Group, uh, ByteDance and TikTok is the second. Ant Group is the first. Uh, and Didi, uh, right hailing giant, uh, it is the third. And then we have Lufax, Kuashio, and yeah, Air, 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 Alibaba's logistic affiliate. So as you see, Chinese unicorns are dominating technology, but everyone will be in technology. We are living in technologically uh, very transformative times. That means you need to upgrade yourself, learn, 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 be really curious, get ready for an age in which we are all in technology. What is the best way to get ready? You need to be great at learning. The moment that you stop learning is the moment that you die. So learning is an imperative. It is not a cliche. You have to keep learning and be curious. And in 2020, corporate learning initiatives topped 200 billion, the highest, and it will go even faster in the next year. So what is the best method to visualize, imagine the complexity of the technological future that face us? Best method, what is it? Any guesses? I think the best method is reading or watching science fiction. That's the best way out there. You can learn so much. So next section, what I will do is, uh, as you can see the horrible, uh, I'm sorry for these GIF images. I just ha wanted to have fun at the expense of you. Sorry about that. Uh, but I'll talk a little bit about science fiction, okay? Uh, at the heart of science fiction is manufacturing curiosity, imagination, and wonder. Why should we care about science fiction? Because it manufactures curiosity, imagination, and wonder. So one of the best examples of this is this book, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's also a movie. Uh, let's look at it. repository for all knowledge and wisdom in the universe is called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. 
and it has this to say about movie trailers. Movie trailers are designed to give you an idea of the film in question in a very short space of time. Typically, they begin with the introduction of a main character. Well, very short. Something so utterly fantastic happened to him. Oh, the that someone just had to make a movie about it. Attention, keep on alert. Your plan is out of schedule for demolition. Hang on, we're going to arrive. Often this section is preceded by the words, you know, world. But sometimes not. Trailers also normally imply a deep voice. Sounds like a seven foot tall man who has been cigarettes since childhood. The goal is to create a piece of advertising that's original and exciting. Oh, intelligent and provocative. In other words, lots of things blowing up. Occasionally interrupted by a girl in the key. That does absolutely nothing for me. Generally, trailers also feature heartless evil villains, hideous creatures, dolphins, physical violence, and of course, the promise of true love. Oh, thank heavens. And lastly, there is a final montage. Rock and set to rock music. Let's do it. Come on! Inside, simply to blow away whatever synapses you have left in your brain. This culminates in a reveal of the main title, like so. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Followed by the release date. So that the audience might plan the next few of their lives accordingly. Okay, so this is a meta trailer, as you can see. But it's a great movie. Uh, and you can learn so much through science fiction movies. And you'll dive into these new worlds, new worlds of imagination. So this is from Star Wars, for example. They just dive, and under the ocean, wherever they enter a new realm, it's a new imaginative world out there, designed by science fiction. You know, in each science fiction movie, you encounter these wonderful new worlds you have never seen, you have never imagined. And that's the value of science fiction. You know, that's why it is so critical for innovation and science. So, I started watching uh, Star Trek Discovery, for example. As you know, in Star Trek, there is an uh, ra uh, alien race called Klingons. And uh, Mark Okrand is the person who invented this language of Klingons. Recently at a local event, I got the chance to sit down with the creator of the Klingon language, Mark Okrand. But his involvement with Star Trek didn't begin with Klingon, but with Vulcan. The producers and so forth figured out that it would make more sense if they were speaking Vulcan in this scene. Uh, when they filmed it, the actors were speaking English. So rather than shoot it all over again, they got the idea of make up some gibberish that sounded different from what they were saying, but looked the same on the lips. Being a flammy buffet, son of a A year and a half later, the phone rang, and it was Harv Bennett, who was the writer and producer of Star Trek Three. He says, you did Vulcan, you want to do Klingon? Every once in a while in life, you're presented with a decision that's really easy to make. And that was one of those. So, I so he created a new language, which is the Klingon language, which is uh, the world's most popular fictional language. Many people, actually, there are uh, many people in the world who speak this fictional language, which is called Klingon. And it all emerged from this Star Trek enterprise and other Star Trek uh, franchises. 
So imagination is important. Science fiction movies are important. They shape our reality. They are the zeitgeist of our times. Inception is the, my most favorite one. I love this one. Something you should know about me. I specialize in a very specific type of security. Subconscious security. You're talking about dreams. Mr. Cobb has a job offer we would like to discuss with you. Can I work please, man? Not exactly. We create the world of the dream. We bring the subject into that dream. And they fill it with their secrets. Can you break in and steal it? Well, it's not strictly speaking legal. It's called Inception. So if you haven't watched this, I recommend definitely watch it. It is one of the uh, best movies ever made by Christopher Nolan's genius. So science fiction is critical because it shapes our imagination, but also it is a way of creating reality, alternative options and futures. So it's also a practical way uh, to imagine our futures in a way. Imagine the new innovations. So futurists are immensely interested in science fiction and prototyping in science fiction. So I, one of the uh, recent movies that I watched, which captures the holistic vision spread of the future shaped by uh, animated zones and avatars was which film? Which movie captures uh, the futuristic vision of avatars and animated zones? Any guesses? It's not actually a very famous movie, but I think it describes the future in a very engaging way. It is called The Congress. It is based on Stanislaw Lem's The Futurological Congress novel. And Stanislaw Lem is one of the greatest authors in science fiction. This is the trailer. You slam all the open doors, crush all the dreams. The condition started going down Eventually, you will be completely blind. This proposal will come to the table again. Robin arrives for Jeff Green. You have a future Robin. A princess bride. And now I'm, I'm in this situation. What situation will you enter? The situation will offer you the last contract that you'll ever have. We want to scan you. All of your body, your face, your emotions, your laughter, your tears. What are all this thing called? I'll be right here. You have to take care of my son. Robin, things will change quickly. Cheers. 
Congress. So you're here too, huh? You and I are the only ones who survived. Who are all the rest? Characters. They invented you. Are you on the right? Cuts. At least I used to be. There is no way I can imagine you are in this world. Cost one from six months ago. So, if you want to, let's say, um, really understand the future of animation zones and avatars, you can read, of course, you can read a lot of science fiction. But one of the other ways is to watch a movie like this because it enhances your imagination. So this is also these things like the the these science fiction movies are becoming a reality in our times so if we um, go to the next puzzle what is the feature of augmented reality think of digital twins everywhere digital twins have become our world almost so imagine everything that is physical having its own digital twin and this will happen, you know. Uh, the world will have its own digital twin. Uh, your own body will have its own digital twin. Uh, companies will have their own digital twins. So all these uh, manipulations, interventions, simulations will be done on these digital twins. So some call this next big technology platform as mirror world. And here is a great article on that. If you are into this, Wired published a great story on this. They call it the mirror world. We are building a one-to-one -one map of almost unimaginable scope. And one, when it is complete, our physical reality will merge with the digital universe. So when we think about the future, it will be harder and harder to distinguish reality from digital worlds because these digital worlds are surrounding all of us all of our worlds and they will come into our bodies they will come into our brains and they will um, merge with reality that surrounds us so how can you prepare for such a world you know let's look at fashion what was the biggest force of fashion, the biggest force of change in fashion? Of course, these were digital models, CGI characters. So if you want to learn more, you can watch this video about these digital models and virtual influencers. So here's a, the next puzzle then. How do you create $125 million Combining the powers of social media, avatars, animation, and artificial intelligence. How do you do that? Brad did this, and they invented Lil Makila. Who the hell is Lil Makila? Who the hell is she? And why is she followed by millions in social media? And where are we going with all of this? So we are entering a new era of avatars in marketing. A couple of weeks ago, I found myself going down a YouTube If Emma Chamberlain. Thank you for, we've never done this before. She's basically like, if Emma Chamberlain. Thank you for watching my videos and being my friend. Became a Sims character. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. I'm going to share some of my life with you. Honestly, it could get kind of harsh. The interesting thing about her is that she's not a person. She's a character made by a team of writers and graphic artists here in Los Angeles. I'm a 19-year-old musician, change seeker, taco truck expert, and robot. We did a video about her over a year ago, and at that point, she had just been named one of Time Magazine's most influential people. People feel really connected to her because it's written as if she were a real person. She's grown a massive following on Instagram and has collaborated with major brands, and she has hit songs with millions of streams. You say my name and it's like party, I wanna spend it on the Since our last video, she's partnered with Calvin Klein. 
joined the Coachella with YouTube Music. What's up? It's Nikki Lee here with YouTube Music at Coachella. And recently became a member of Samsung's Team Galaxy to promote their new phones. Posting on Instagram or Twitter is one thing, but seeing Michaela on YouTube is just bizarre. I just want to feel close to someone who isn't my family. YouTube just a deeper connection with the audience than Instagram. I, I love, love you. you. I, I love you. I love you. Like, you're so awesome. And in our opinion, it feels like a real friendship. I don't think about it as me talking to this crowd of people. I always thought about it as me connecting with one person from one lunch. Especially when the people you watch open up to you in ways that your family or friends sometimes can't. I've tried filming this like three times already and I had to stop every time because I broke down crying. This gives me so much anxiety. To us, this feels like an episode of Black Mirror on Netflix. And Michaela's influence is only growing stronger. I'm going to tell you a story that's super embarrassing. It made me sad for a minute, but I don't know. Maybe some of y'all will relate. Even though Michaela is continually finding success collaborating with friends and celebrities, the company that created her has remained very mysterious. And their name is Brud. So we wanted to look into Brud and understand who behind Michaela and what are their motives? Especially considering that one of the first things we found is that they are valued at $125 million. That's a lot of money for an animated character. Okay, so I'll stop here. But this is transforming the world of marketing and social media as we know it. So when do we have artificial intelligence power TV personalities? This is the next puzzle. We already do have them, as you know. Uh, and most of them are in China. Uh, the first female AI new anchors, news anchors. Uh, you can see her here. So, this is a new world, really. And which firm recently introduced the technology of artificial humans? Uh, Samsung. Samsung created a new technology called Neo. And you can watch its uh, videos. They created all these artificial humans, which look perfectly human. So it will be more and more difficult to distinguish these digital characters from real people. So here is your learning adventure. I want you to imagine the jobs of the future. Uh, before we do that, uh, let me just say that uh, many of the things that are used to be science fiction are currently becoming a reality. So. Uh, we will soon live in a total nerd utopia, I think. That's why, even if I'm not a nerd, I began uh, a lot of interest in all of these, you know, human-like robots, AI, nanotech, and all these new technologies. So by mid-century, the number of people on Earth over 60 years old is anticipated to more than double. And the number of people over 80 is expected to triple. So you see that the demographics are changing really fast. Human life will get longer and longer. So there are some reports which are about how we can incorporate and um, better use the skills of 100 plus year old people into the workforce. How will we do that? You know, so we are living in these strange times where there are all these new, uh, different generations. They are coming together into the workforce. And what about the world population? It will rise to almost 10 billion by mid-century uh, and 11.2 billion uh, by the end of the century. And sustainability is the major challenge, along with global warming. So I want you to look at future jobs. These are uh, future jobs I will present you. I want you to choose the jobs that are appealing to you and make notes. Which ones are appealing to you? And choose your top three jobs, okay, as I will introduce them. And imagine how you will change and transform yourself 
in the future, in the future of all these technological changes. So these are some of the jobs of the future. Digital rehabilitation counselor. So we are all overwhelmed by the incredible amount of digital information we consume. So this is about social media overload. And so digital rehab counselors will help people to detox. So is this interesting for you? Yes or no? Would you choose this? No, that's number one. Number two, personal brand advisors. Everybody needs to have a personal brand. And these brands are online. So how do you establish your personal brand online? We will have advisors doing this. Number three, virtual reality designer. So this is related to the mirror world and the avatars. We will all have our own avatars and uh, we will hang out in virtual reality and augmented reality. So virtual reality designers will be uh, in much. So how do you create sophisticated, realistic, imaginative virtual experiences? That's one of the jobs of the future. Again, uh, would you consider this? Yes or no? Okay, let's continue. Organizational disruptors. Every company, every organization has to disrupt themselves. Otherwise, they will become disrupted. They will go bankrupt. So the role of the disruptor is to introduce chaotic changes and creativity and risk taking into organizations. How can dinosaurs learn to dance, let's say? And if you cannot dance, you will become. So organizations have to be agile. How do you do that? Disruptors are there to do that. Yes or no? The next one, personal education guide. So education will become much more personalized and convenient. So these people will create customized training plans for individuals. The next one, brain implant specialists. The human brain is very complex, of course, but with the rapid advances in neuroscience and computer technology, uh, chips will be implemented into our brains. Neuralink, Elon Musk, remember. So how do we do this? Uh, enhancements, mood regulations, uh, virtual telepathies, and the new, uh, lots of new jobs related to these. This is one of the biggest, again, areas. Personal microbiome managers. So as we learn more about the bacteria that live within us, we are discovering that these microorganisms are very important for our health. So uh, these bacteria will be crucial for, to prevent obesity, heart disease, etc. But also uh, there will be micro nanocomputers inside our bodies that are traveling in, uh, and they, they, they will measure our blood flow, blood pressure, etc and all will be powered by artificial intelligence. Pharmaceutical artisans. So with 3D printing, we will be able to have on-demand individualized artisanal drugs based on your own unique genetics, habits, and medical history. You will have your own digital twin and you will have your own personalized uh, medicine and medical system. Okay, what else? End of life manager or memorializer. So as you know, many people, when they die, their online existence continues. So how do you manage it? Major end of life celebrations, tributes, etc. And how do you manage your virtual data, let's say? So this is another job. Hyper-intelligent transportation engineers. This is, again, a field that Elon Musk is investing. Smart roads, self-driving cars are the, just the beginning. 
self-driving trucks, vacuum tube channels, and advanced transportation systems. Cyborg designer. So uh, this will work on the symbiosis between humans and machines. We are entering a new era where we need to uh, work with machines, right? We need a new symbiosis with machines and robots. So cyborg designers will work on this. Robotic holographic avatar designers. Again, this is another um, very important job for the future. Uh, in virtual reality and augmented reality worlds, how do you design your avatars? robotic bodies or 3D holograms. Space tourism guide. So SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, they are already having plans for space travel. And Elon Musk uh, is planning to go to Mars, as you know. So uh, space tourism will be one of the future jobs. Space nurses, physicians, another one. How does human body survive in zero gravity environments? So we can learn a lot from astronauts in this field. And as we become a multi-planet species, these fields are becoming more important. Android relationship counselors. Uh, remember the movie Her? She, uh, he fell in with this theory. Like, uh, and what happens next? You know, what happens if you fall into romantic relationships with AI robots or voice assistants? So there will be counseling needs for these. And mind transfer specialist, which is a bit far-fetched for now, but it, it is about uploading human mind to computers and machines and uh, vice versa. Okay, so out of these jobs, you see all the jobs. Which jobs do you see will be really good fit for you? Choose your top three. Digital rehab counselor, personal brand advisor, virtual reality designer, organizational disruptor, personal education guide. So take a note and choose three of these. Cyborg designer, robotic holographic avatar designer, space tourism guide. Which ones are like most appealing to you? Think about it. And more importantly, how you change and transform yourself into this new feature. Let's say the world will be radically different in 2030, let's say. How do you prepare yourself for this new world powered by AI, artificial intelligence? Think about that. How will you transform your own career in this new age? Think about that. We, have just, we are just entering a new decade. And I think you need to be more curious about what the future will bring and what will be the career implications. So in the next one minute, write down your reflections on what you learned about these jobs, about what you learned. Do you have any ideas? Capture them, please, in the next 30 seconds. Okay, the next one, here's a puzzle. You are designing the city of the future. How would you go about it? In the next two minutes, I want you to open a white page, a new page in your notebook. Get a pen or pencil. In the next two minutes, please draw or imagine the city of the future. Can you create some ideas, doodle your ideas, visualize, prototype your ideas? Whatever comes 
to you, please capture them on paper. You can come up with a concept map. You can draw your ideas. Imagine that you are designing the city of the future. How would you go about it? Make notes. Come up with a list of ideas, maybe. Or try to draw it, if you can. How can you design the uh, city of the future? Any ideas, any keywords that come to you, type them up. If your mind is totally black, then think about some simple basics, principles. For example, it needs to be sustainable, right? Cities of the future need to battle with global warming right how will they do that for example how will the transportation shift what about work life we have already experienced this pandemic people are working from homes. so there is a big migration from the city centers into villages you know people are escaping because people can work from homes now. So villages, rural parts, have become the new hotspots in this period. So there are a lot of changes. How can you imagine future changes? Okay, we are running out of time, so I'll stop here, but we can uh, continue this exercise. Make sure you also Google what's up. You know, go to Google, ask Google, and what comes up about the cities of the future. There are many reports that you can read and learn a lot from. So here's the next puzzle. Which city in the world is currently the fastest in its technological evolution? Any ideas, any guesses? I would say, of course, like California, Silicon Valley, might be one of them. London might be one of the fastest, right? Hong Kong might be one of them. New York might be among them, yeah? But the real answer is Shenzhen. Shenzhen in China. China's Silicon Valley is emerging there. Chinese megacity of Shenzhen, a gleaming monument to China's economic miracle. In 1980, it was a town with around 60,000 residents. Now it's China's technological hub, with a population of over 12 million. Entrepreneurs, high flying tech goods, and international companies flock here to join the tech revolution. Welcome to Shenzhen. Shenzhen sits north of Hong Kong in the Pearl River Delta, one of the most densely urbanized regions in the world. The area has an estimated population of 120 million people. In 1980, Shenzhen was dedicated a free economic zone, an experiment in market capitalism in communist China. The effects were explosive. Shenzhen's population skyrocketed in just over three years. It up, and this is where it's made. This is Huachang Bay Market, arguably the world's largest electronics market. Filming here is banned. Hi, 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 hi. But he is a sneaky. The market's neon lit corridors stretch across multiple buildings and many floors. The stalls sell everything from the latest gadgets to the tiniest screws, and many items are rip offs, Chinese fakes of US products. 
But if you wanted to, you could buy all you need to build your own smartphone or 100,000 of them. Because Shenzhen draws in workers from across China, its food seems just as varied as its population, having a Chinese bank account. So, a check. Okay, so, Hello World uh, went to Shenzhen. And this is the intro video for that. in Shenzhen. The good citizens of the PRC have come to this park to get fitter and more productive. All under the watchful, approving gaze of Deng Xiaoping, the revered granddaddy of China's free market reforms. The scene tells you much of what you need to know about Shenzhen. It's China, for sure, but it's also something different. It's a city of imports, young, hardworking, smart, and often freer thinking people. Plots from all around the country. They've come here to toil during the day, improve themselves at night, and to get ahead. It's ambition that is the lifeblood of Shenzhen. Its factories, its markets, its startups, its surging tech empires. And it's stuff like this, an orgiastic explosion of LEDs that are the greener and of course more futuristic version of fireworks. Your city do that. No, your city sure as shit can't. But here's the story of why Shenzhen can, and why everyone, especially the folks in Silicon Valley, should be aware, and probably a little frightened, of what's coming for them. So this is a great program. They are treating engineers as superstars. They are having the world's most advanced innovations in robotics. It is an amazing city, uh, and you can learn so much from this documentary. Which Chinese movie was the most successful movie in 2019? It made huge waves across the world. It was one of the world's most successful films in that year and it was ultimately bought by netflix maybe you have watched it the wandering earth is the movie it's a science fiction movie the chinese style It's an amazing movie. If you haven't watched it, I recommend it. Uh, so here is your next adventure. I want you to imagine yourself traveling to 2025 or five years forward, let's say. Uh, you can also imagine 2026 if you want. 
So you will do time travel. Imagine that there is a secret time travel machine. Are you ready? You will enter through this machine. It is like Dr. Who box. You will travel five years into the future. Okay. Fast forward five years. Have a nice trip, relax now, open up your imagination. You landed on your own future five years from now. Look around, what do you see? Where are you? What projects are you working on? How is your career? Have you generated, created your own assets? How is your personal life, family life? What are the things that you are proud of? Do you regret anything? Which skills, knowledge do you have? Where do you live? Are there any surprises? So this is your exercise. I want you to imagine that you are in 2025, the end of 2025, let's say. I want you to write down whatever comes to you. Open up a new white page, please. Start with the word. How do you see the word? What are the big trends? And then think about organizations work. How did it change? How, how do businesses change? Think of, you can also think about technology, of course. And your career, where do you see yourself? What are you doing? Imagine your typical day. And your life. Imagine your house your family, friends, lifestyle, habits, belongings. What makes you proud? Where are you living, etc. Do you have a car? Which city are you in? Dream, dream without limits. And you can put everything that you wish onto the pages, okay? You can write or you can draw it or you can just make a list as you wish. I want you to capture whatever comes to you. Okay, capture it, capture all your thoughts as they, as they come to you. This is your chance to imagine a future for yourself, your career, and the world around you. Imagine without limits, where will you be? Where do you wish to be? And the trick here is to really think in rigor details the more details you can think about the better that's why i tell you to imagine your typical work day what do you do let's say you have woken up in the morning what do you do how do you go to work where do you work how is your career unfolding which city are you in tell us about your house do you live with somebody do you have any pets etc where do you imagine yourself capture all the details as this come to you and write down keep writing please keep writing capture all your thoughts in the next two minutes whatever comes to you capture them all and then you will discuss it, okay, with your friends in groups. Try to make this detailed. Imagine that you are like creating a film almost. And write a scenario for yourself. Write a script almost. Try to see the details if you can. And there are no wrong ideas, remember. Your goal is not prediction. I don't want you to, like, to make accurate predictions. That's not the point. The point is amplifying your imagination. It's all about maximizing your imagination, using it to the fullest, Coming, come up with your own dreams. That's the idea. Create your own details. This is also an exercise in word building. You know, you are building a new world for yourself. 
for your future. The more detailed it is, the better you are in achieving it. You know, all achievements, they all emerge in your imagination. So imagination, I argue, is your biggest asset in your life. If you have imagination, you will figure it out. You, know, you will make it happen. All starts with imagination. That's why like, uh, this module, I put everything the, at the center of the module is imagination. Imagination is the heart of creativity, right? That's what makes us human. And you will need more and more of it in the upcoming decade. You will need much more imagination. So that's why I'm focusing on imagination in this module. You know. And you won't have any other module that will do that. So this is your chance, your opportunity. Imagine beyond limits and write it down. So let's say it is winter. How does your life look like? What are you doing? Where are you living? Who are you living with? Describe your house. Do you have pets? Which city are you in? Think about your furniture, your bed, clothes, hair. Do you have any kids? Do you have any car? Do you have a boat? What do you read? What do you want? What excites you? How is your health? Imagine your one day from the minute you wake up until you go to bed. And I want you to dream without any fear. If you don't want to share it, you don't have to share it. I want you to put your whole heart into it. And I want you to uh, repeat this exercise by yourself, you know, do it every year and see how your dreams are changing. Because you change so much in just one year. Imagine where you were last year. You know, I sometimes do this. I look at my diaries from last year. and. I changed so much in the last one year that it is like almost like uh, I have experienced so much in the past year, you know. The same will be about the future, you know, that you will change so much and your life will change so much. Let's hope and make it for the better. How can you imagine the best possibility for your life and capture it, please? So please capture your plans in the next two minutes and uh, write them down. And then in two minutes, we will start the discussion. You can share whatever you want to share. But I now want you to take notes as much as you can, please. Keep writing.
Okay, now I will assign you to teams. Do some short discussion. Share your dreams with one another. Share your time travel exercise, please. So be ready for teamwork. Try to talk if you can. Try to talk. Uh, and we will make it short, OK? So be quick. I mean, I can understand that you have just submitted a really big for portfolio. You might be tired. I can understand that, of course. And I uh, empathize. So now, let me continue with the next part of the lecture then. So what is the most powerful supercomputer in the world? And of course, you know the answer. You have it. That's the brain. So that's why brain scientists, computer scientists are trying to build supercomputers that operate your, like your brain. The human brain is the most powerful supercomputer it helps us navigate our environment by carrying out about 1,000 trillion logical operations per second. It's compact, uses less power than a light bulb, and has potentially endless storage. The human brain is really one of the most complex systems that we can imagine. We have a fundamental lack in our understanding of the way the components in the brain interact. But it is this very interaction that generates cognition and consciousness. 
All these mind-boggling intricacies have driven our fascination with the brain, and for centuries we've been trying to map and understand it. And most recently, replicate it. The brain is certainly has been evolving for nearly four billion years, and the more we learn about the brain, the more we are able to incorporate the smart ways that it does computation into our artificial devices. Scientists are beginning to agree that to realize our technological dreams, we need to build computers that work with our brains. One day, these computers could in turn help us unlock more secrets of cognition. So you can watch the rest. It's a great video. Who, in the next puzzle, who are the most ambitious, biggest private players in space travel? Space travel, the age of space travel is just starting. Who are the biggest players? Of course, you know, one of them is Elon Musk. You know that, right? But also Jeff Bezos of Amazon. He established Blue Origin. And Richard Branson, sorry, there is a typo, Virgin Galactic. And of course, SpaceX, Elon Musk. So these are the three biggest players in space travel. And there is a lot of competition in this business. Private companies, lots of them, are rushing to commercialize not just the final frontier, but the act of getting there. I'm a sports guy. This is like March Madness. It's one and done. I got one shot to get to the end, or else I'm either going to fail, run out of money, or be, be gobbled up by someone else. And whoever figures out how to make launch safe, affordable, and convenient is going to take the next giant leap. So this is a great area, um, and according to astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, who will be the first trillionaires? So he says the first trillionaires will be who? Any guesses? Those who mine asteroids. Space mining is the industry of the future. Space minerals, space mining. Why is this such a big deal? The trillion dollar mining industry supplies raw materials needed for everything from skyscrapers to smartphones. But mining also comes with an increasingly critical environmental cost, one that may require us to think about off-planet solutions before it's too late. Asteroids, moons and planets in our own solar system hold an essentially unlimited supply of untapped resources. The first trillionaires will be those who mine asteroids. Resources like gold, platinum and rare earth metals make some of those asteroids incredibly high priced. But the most valuable element may be our most basic one. What you want to mine in space is what you need a lot of. And while humans have been mining for thousands of years, mining in space requires new, innovative technologies to realize any potential business and economic opportunities. Such technologies might just allow humanity to expand operations on Earth and take that next giant leap. And this is huge business. And even possible droids in our solar system. Over the past two decades, Government and private aerospace companies, each of them is an asteroid, have been investigating their composition, location, and even possible payoffs to mine them. This one, known as Bennu, has an estimated value of $669 million. Ryugu, $82 billion. Better yet, an asteroid called Davida, which is valued at more than $100 trillion. And the so, the future richness is in these. Uh, the next puzzle, will we see flying cars? How might we see them in 10 years? The best bet is that they will be drones, air taxis that are run by electricity. If you are into this, you can watch this video. 
uh, it is about flying cars. Is it happening? What can we expect? And I want you to think about this. If you were a super superhero, think of yourself as a superhero. What do you wish to accomplish? Let's say you will have new adventures. I want you to imagine new adventures. Think about this. Imagine that Marvel wants to create a new comic book series or TV drama based on you. So you will create your own superhero version. Okay. You give yourself a name and you will think of a story that is interesting. Yeah, think about it. Like if you were a superhero, what would be your superpowers? And imagine a scenario, create your own scenario. And perhaps you can connect it to the future exercise or the, your future career. You know, if you have some super skills that you can leverage, you can use them as a superhero. And you can even connect it to your asset creation project. If you have particular powers, super skills, turn them into your 7i project or your entrepreneurial project. Think about it. So the next puzzle comes. Name a real life person that you know that embodies a science fiction character. So if we think of one person who is a science fiction character, of course, he is Elon Musk. He is a superhero. He is the embodiment of imagination and science fiction. Why do we love him so much? He, 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 it looks like he is like from the movies. You know, remember this cyber truck launch? Welcome to the cyber truck unveil. This is like a science fiction movie, guys. Look at this. They are trying to break. And they. This is regular glass. This is like normal. Of course, then they break the glasses, which was unexpected. Maybe that was a little too hard. And he's a showman. Look at this. I mean, this is a show business. And look at all the fans. They are chanting. Uh, so you'd have to have suspension. You can drop real low. And you go high on the other side. Pull this load boat. I mean, this is like from a science fiction movie. And I think we are really lucky that we live in these times. Because there is so much innovation. So why do we love Elon Musk? Some of you might not love him. Maybe some of you are hating him. But uh, I, I, I love him. Why? Because he has bold ambitions, imaginative storytelling, enormous risk taking, and there is always a wow factor. There is always a surprise. So what is really critical is that he created four companies. He's a historical figure. Why? Because he created four companies worth more than one billion each. That is the first, you know, in history, he is the only person who has been able to transform total industries. All these are unicorns, PayPal, Tesla, SpaceX, and SolarCity. Each of them are worth billions of dollars. And Elon Musk has disrupted eight industries already. So he has completely disrupted eight industries. There is no other second person who was able to do that. So if you look at his companies, SpaceX, Tesla, SolarCity, the boring company, Hyperloop, he's everywhere. And if you want to read, learn more about his life, read this book. This is by Ashley Vance of the billionaire CEO of SpaceX and Tesla is shaping our future. This is that you can uh, learn more about Elon Musk. And there are videos. I put some more videos as well. And the last part, part you can um, explore this at home. This is about Wonderland, why entertainment is crucial in science fiction. So th this is a, there is a book called Wonderland. Play is very important. Imagination and uh, creativity are very important. And you can be imaginative when you are playing, really. 
So I leave this with you. Computer games are one of the most serious businesses. Why? Gaming industry is double the film industry. And it is getting bigger and bigger. And almost 3 billion people are playing computer games. So uh, this human drive to explore, to play, it will never finish. And this is the key to innovation. We will build space elevators. We will go to Mars. We will uh, build super microcomputers. And all of these avatars, virtual reality experiences, all of these are possible through imagination and play. So how can you be more playful? I included an exercise on that. But uh, you can explore all of these. The last part, I have the last part of today is a puzzle. Who are the biggest global East Asian act in history? They generate $3.6 billion for South Korea every year. Who are they? Any guesses? They are the BTS, of course. So uh, can you tell the names of all members of BTS from your memory. If you can, you are a fan. You are an army member. So these are the members of BTS. And how did they become so successful? I'll finish with their case today. BTS is everywhere, and people can't get enough of them. BTS! We welcome BTS! After finding success in South Korea, they were able to make a huge splash internationally. Tickets for their global concert tour sold out within hours of being released. They became the first ever K-pop act to make a number one album, with 2018's Love Yourself here. And they're not stopping anytime soon. Their newest album, Map of the Soul, Persona, is already looking like it'll be a huge hit. And of course, people camped outside for days to see them perform live on Saturday Night Live. But BTS wasn't an overnight sensation. It took them years of hard work to get to this level. BTS debuted in June 2013, and they quickly gained a dedicated fan base thanks to social media. They show a lot of love and appreciation for their fans, who they even named ARMY, which means Adorable Representatives for MCU. And in 2017, BTS won the Top Social Artist Billboard Award, breaking Bieber's six-year winning streak and making them the first K-pop act to win a Billboard Music Award. Unsurprisingly, they won again in 2018. BTS also became the first K-pop band to perform at the American Music Awards in 2017, gaining them even internationally. But their fans don't just love them for their mind-blowing performances. They love yes, them for their yes, music. So, if we look at their success story, they have become a major moneymaker for South Korea, uh, but they have also have become a phenomenon. Uh, they give messages on mental well-being and loving yourself. M is the leader of the group, and they generate, as I said, 3.6 billion, not million, 3.6 billion every year. Uh, one in 13 tourists who visit South Korea cited BTS as the motive for their visit. And there's an entire creative industry around them. They are a formidable world-class creative organism. Um, so they spoke at the United Nations and they were at the cover of Time Next Generation Leaders. And even uh, Mattel made a collection of them, a Barbie doll collection. So I wrote an article. If you want to explore more, uh, I, I have written a couple of articles about them, but you can find this one, uh, three remarkable lessons from the world's most successful band. If you click on the friend link here at the bottom, uh, you can learn so much more about the success story of BTS. And how they become such a uh, big successful uh, 
banned and why it is so critical for creativity. So uh, as you see, I talked about imagination today. All these topics, I learned them in just two weeks. And the secret formula is follow your heart, your curiosity, your learning, times adventure, play, imagination and creation. If you multiply them, you will uh, live a much happier life, I think. So you need to go out of the box and swim up against currents of mediocrity. You need to scare yourself, challenge yourself. Each day is an adventure. What does your heart desire? What are you curious about? Def define your own definition of success. What others think is irrelevant. And you can have a secret creative side, entrepreneurial career, alongside your day job. Actually, you need to have it. And this will be your secret hero identity. And what else? Entertainment is serious business. If you want to understand the future, look at science fiction and look at entertainment. So what if you can think and act like a science fiction character? So provide yourself more opportunities for imagination, creativity, curiosity, play, fun, entertainment. These are really important and they are extremely important for your asset creation project. So do something that will be extremely exciting. Do something that you are curious about for your project. Science fiction movies, expand your mind into the future. Explore them, read more science fiction books, watch more movies. Life is short for mediocrity, go for crazy. Learning about the future is weird and fun. Give more support to geeks, misfits like Elon Musk, and we need more of these people. And you can be one of them. And I finish with this horrible GIF image who will haunt you in your nightmares. So have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thank you for your patience. And I will see you in our new, brand new uh, seminar series on Monday and Tuesday. Okay, thanks a lot, everyone. I'll see you next week on Monday and Tuesday. Great to have you all. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.